Lately, a lot of friends have been name dropping Philly cheesesteaks. And it got me thinking, one, why in the world do I not have one in my hand right now? Two, where in the world did the Philly cheesesteak come from? And three, why in the world is it that every time I've tried to make a Philly cheesesteak at home using Cheese Whiz, it never tastes right? We'll find out that today here on Bob Appetit. For every sandwich you want to make, you're going to need a quarter pound of thinly sliced ribeye, one sixth of a large white onion, thinly sliced, two slices of aged provolone or American cheese, or cheese whiz warmed up either on a double boiler or in your microwave. You'll need a hoagie roll, ideally amorosos, but whatever sturdy roll you can find will work. Toasted or untoasted, your preference. And you'll need a little bit of canola oil or peanut oil for cooking. A good Philly cheesesteak is gonna have thin sliced ribeye meat. And the reason for this is that you want it fatty so that you get all that nice juice flavor and you want it thin so it can cook super fast. But the best way to get thin sliced meat is gonna be either your local butcher, freezing it for up to two hours and then slicing the meat very thin, being careful not to tear it, or three, going to your local Asian supermarket and getting the meat that they use for hot pot, which is usually just as thin as you want. Let's say you'd rather trek to Philly than make your own Philly cheese steak. Something to keep in mind is that Philadelphians order it quick. And so you better be ready. And there are only two choices you have to make, cheese and with. That's right, Philadelphians don't order their cheese steaks, hey, I'll have one with cheese. No, they order it one provolone with. Why? Because what they're actually saying is how many they want, the kind of cheese they want, and whether they want it with or without onions. So the next time you go in there, it's one cheese with or two provolone without. That's your options. Now move to the next window. So the story goes that in the 1930s, Pat Olivieri and his brother ran a hot dog stand. But Pat, getting a little bored of eating hot dogs, sent his brother down to the local butcher to bring him back some thin sliced meat. Taking a few onions that he had, he slapped the meat on the grill, cooked it up with the onions, and threw it on to a hot dog bun that he had. A nearby driver, smelling this cooked meat and onions, came over and said, Pat, can I have one of those? And after taking a bite into it, he said, Pat, you need to get out of the hot dog game and get into this steak and onions game. So he did. Now here's where the stories start to diverge a little bit. Some say that it was Pat and his general manager. Some say that it was Gino's. Some say that it was just a random freak occurrence. But at some point, cheese got added to this steak and onion sandwich. Now here's the big deal. The cheese steak was invented in the 1930s. Cheese Whiz didn't come out until the 1950s. And that's because the original cheesesteaks didn't use Cheese Whiz. The OGs would have probably been either American or provolone, with provolone being the most likely. But then in the 1950s, when Cheese Whiz came out, it was a faster cheese to cook with and was taking America by storm. And so it entered into the fray of the top three types of cheeses you can get on your cheesesteak in Philly. And what makes Cheese Whiz the sensation it became? The drip, that amalgamation of beef fat, onion juices, and ooey creaminess that just fills your mouth and soaks the bread and just gets everywhere. It drips on everything, but it is so good that people come craving it time and time again. So much so that now everybody thinks that Cheese Whiz and Philly cheesesteaks were the original. In the great Philly cheesesteak book, by Carolyn Wyman, linked down below. She calls out that one thing that always seems off about your Philly cheesesteak at home, and that's the cheese whiz doesn't seem to taste as good. There's a reason for that. The restaurant grade cheese whiz that Pat's and Gino's and everyone else gets actually has more real cheese in it than the stuff you find in your local supermarket. So if you want that kind of flavor, you're actually gonna have to make your own cheese whiz. Maybe I'll make a video on that in a future episode. But for today, just know that if you try it Cheese Whiz style, it won't be quite the same, but it's still pretty good. You still get that drip. First, heat up a cast iron or non-stick pan to medium heat. Then add your oil and cook your onions until softened and golden, about three to five minutes. Don't let them get too brown. 
Then remove your onions, add a little bit more oil if needed, and spread your meat out and season with salt and pepper. Let the meat cook for about two to three minutes until you don't see any pink and add your onions back in. Let sizzle for about 30 seconds tossing about. Here, add your American or provolone on top. If you're doing cheese whiz, skip till after the bun. Let your cheese melt down for 30 seconds and then add your bun and let it continue to melt for another 30 seconds. Now slide a spatula underneath and then flip over in your hand, being sure to scoop up any runaway meat and cheese. Get back here. We want all that deliciousness. And if you're doing cheese whiz, now is when you'd add it. All right, Philly, let's give this guy a try. Oh yeah. Mm. Mm. You get that wonderful, juicy meat flavor, sweet onion flavor coming through. And the cheese just brings it all together in that nice gooey creaminess. I can see why this was an OG. And I know why this could stop a taxi driver and demand that Pat go start his own restaurant based on this. Or at least the steak form of this, the cheese coming later. It's got everything you want. And it fits right in the palm of your hand. You can just walk down the street eating it. Perfect for a working day. Okay, Philadelphians, get down in the comments. Let me know how I did. Did this ring true to your city? Or do you think there's something else I should have done? And remember, study at the dinner table. We'll catch you next time on Bob Appetit. <laughs> get it? Because the, the Liberty Bell rings true. I'll just see my sandwich.